This is day three of the expose about Yahushua. And I wanted to talk to Messianic Jews and some of those people that are Christians that have gotten involved in that cult of sacred namers and maybe some legalistic Messianic group that somehow, you know, wants to be like this wandering Jew. They want you to get down into the roots of your heritage. And while it sounds like a noble idea, and while there may be some good that you could learn in discovering the roots of Judeo-Christianity, remember, it's called Judeo-Christianity for a reason. It's not just about Jews, and it's not just about Gentiles. It's actually about children of God. And at the beginning, before there was a Jew and there was a Gentile, Adam walked with God. Enoch walked with God. There are people that walked with God that were neither Jew nor Gentile. They were called the children of God. They were sons and daughters of God. They walked with God and they talked with God and they knew God and they had fellowship with God. And in the fullness of time when God wanted to bring about salvation unto the entire generations of men, then he called the people unto himself to demonstrate what the plan of salvation would be. So he chose a people, and those people were Jewish. They originally came from Avraham, the son of Abraham, and one of them was Judah, who happened to be the son of Jacob, who was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. And that's where we got the word Jew, wish, or Jew from Judah. And it isn't because the tribes are lost, because frankly, you're going to find that most Jews, if you read the book of Acts, already understand that, <laughs> There's some people listed in the tribes that they already knew where they were from. And if you go into Chabad for any length of time, you're going to find that, you know, you can trace back some heritages going pretty far back. And you may be shocked at what's going to happen once the temple begins to be rebuilt. And it's not being rebuilt right now, so just don't go there. But in the Messianic movement, I wanted to remind people that, hey, look, you know, there are good messianic groups out there that are studying and learning and applying but you want to not be so root bound that you're not fruit found in other words if you're not developing fruit of the spirit peace love and joy out of your studies then you're root bound you're no good and you're going to be like this wandering Jew that if you decided to break off a piece here's what happens when you take a wandering Jew in case you didn't know I can leave this wandering Jew, and this is a wandering Jew, it's a royal wandering Jew, and um, I can leave it laying around for, oh, I don't know, about a week, and then I could pick it up and I could plant it, and it'll grow. I could put it in water and it'll grow. But you know what happens if I leave it out long enough without there being any roots? It will die. Now, to understand this principle, you have to realize, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you're cut off from Jesus, then guess what? You're missing the point and the mark. You're not going to have a profitable, personable, wandering Jew that's going to live much longer than a week or a month or a year because it will die. And God will come eventually and he'll say, look, you could have taken that and you could have put it in water. You could have rooted it and it would have grown. You could have put it in dirt and rooted it and it would have grown. You could have put it just about in anything and it would have grown. But you didn't grow up. You stuck your head in the dirt and decided to keep it there and you didn't grow fruit unto righteousness. You're not becoming more righteous. You're becoming root bound. And I can tell you this. A wandering Jew that gets root bound will look a lot like this. You can see this. This little sucker is all sucked up and sucked out because it just can't suck up any more water because it's root bound. The other roots have tangled and entangled themselves so much that there is no way for this root to get enough water to sustain the life of this wandering Jew. That's what you're like in sacred name. When you get into something like that, the roots are going to get so entangled that they're going to constantly suck the life out of you. It's meant to take away from you the fruit bound that you're supposed to be, the fruit found that you're supposed to be, that it will suck the peace out of you. Examine your life. 
If you're in Yahushua's and you're a Yahoo, what peace do you really have? Are you easily provoked right now? Are you easily challenged? Can you be, oh, I got to defend myself against all oncomers? Or are you joining yourself with the body of believers of Jesus in a uniform way that you can highlight the worship and the praise and the joy and celebrate God in the unity of the faith? Are you losing your love for one another? Has the love of the brethren been lost in you that you no longer have that? That you think you have to chastise and tell people that they can no longer worship freely, but they have to worship on Shabbos? That you have to become a super Jew in order to be one of those that you think you are, that you aren't, that even a Jew couldn't do. I mean, I've been in Chabad of all things, you know, ultra-Orthodox, and don't tell me that there's a super Jew out there that's righteous. Ha! Huh. Seen there, been there, done that. Uh-uh. Behind the scenes, people are people. You're not going to find perfection in any religious form whatsoever. No matter whether you go to Jerusalem, and I've lived there, or whether you go to the frozen chosen in the north, or whether you go to the south, or wherever you go, it doesn't matter. Or Russia, where Chabad was. You're not going to fire Brezhlev or wherever, but you won't find any Jewish person perfect because there was one and that was it. It's over, done. I'm not going to do it. So when you're looking at this Yahushua idea, remember and recognize that you got wrapped up into a religion that wanted to suddenly revise itself because it was dying on the vine. It could not survive. So they decided to change things rather than become a part of the body of Christ. They decide to separate themselves and segregate themselves into a sect. And whenever you get sectarianism, you're going to find that you're no longer absorbing all the benefits from the body of Christ that God has blessed his bride with. You're no longer a part of the bride because you're trying to make yourself out to be the only bride there is. And that's sin. Jesus will not take you into heaven because you can't get along with those on earth. That's the bottom line. If you can't get along now, you're not going to get along then. So why should he take you? You will go into tribulation period. Why? Because you've added all these other things unto you. You brought upon yourself your own judgment. You really want to be that way? Do you really think that you're the only ones? That somehow you're going to be perfected? Well, then God will give you over to your own ideas. But he'll do it in a way you don't understand and you won't like. Because he'll leave you to those things that you added unto your faith. And that will take you straight into tribulation period. Irregardless of whether you believe in the pre-trib rapture or not. It doesn't matter. Yahushuans, you know, sorry. Sacred namers, sorry. You guys who think you're so legalistically correct that you don't recognize the opportunities that God has given in grace for you to be fruit found full of peace, love, and joy that God would just love to bring you home to heaven so that he could taste and see that your life has been good? Do you really think that your worship is that perfected alone without anybody else with you? Do you really think when God said many are called and few are chosen, you are the chosen? Really? Why not ask him? Let's see if we can put this in the fulcrum of demonstra demonstrable needs. Ask God specifically. Don't go anywhere else with, you know, having to prove it because in these Yahushua exposés and the sacred name exposé, we've already proven that everything about the sacred name movement was went out of its way to change the scriptures. Why would you change the scriptures when they have been bringing salvation to people for centuries? Why would you want to deceive yourself and to be misled by someone who's not Jesus? In other words, we can say Yeshua, and we can say Jesus, and we can say Yehoshua. We have no problem with that. The problem is what you're doing with what you're learning, and you're going back into your roots, and you're sucking up and sucking out the life of everyone around you. So the reality is, is what are you being profitable for? Your own destruction? Your own learning process? Then go and trip. Go deal with it. Die for your faith. Because if you do, well, fine. <laughs> you know, you'll make it to heaven. God help you. Because that's what you'll need. Because you'll demonstrate whether or not you really are that adamant and that oh so root bound that you think you can manage to die for your faith without the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because if the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Truth has been revealed to you now, 
with all these demonstrable means of looking at the scriptures and asking God personally to show you, then you're not going to guess. You're not going to get that opportunity to realize or be prepared for when Jesus returns. You're going to be looking for and trying to change your life to make yourself into something you think you are, whether it be a lost tribe you think that are lost, whether it be a Jew you think you're a Jew, whether it be some kind of messianic aberration of some kind of idea that you have, or whether it be you think you're some kind of 144,000 like the Jehovah's Witnesses, or you think you're something else. Because you see, you just think you are. Because the reality is this. As surely as God created this plant, a wandering Jew, and as it exists and it's watered and it bears flowers, <laughs> it doesn't bear fruit, which ought to be a lesson to you. But as surely as it grows, I challenge you in this way. On day three of this expose of Yahushua's, Yahushua's and Yahushua's, and all those Yahoo's that are running around with their yo yo's and their ya ya's and their yoo hoo's, that that's gone. I mean, you don't have to take the Bible as the word of God to be truthful, although you should. You don't have to just bluntly, you know, examine all the proofs that have been given, over 50 of them in three days. But ask God bluntly, God, help. I've been told all this information. Help me now. Have mercy upon me and show me the truth. I only ask that you would do it with me and you alone. Don't go by my word. Ask God himself. Ask the yud heh vav if you want to go directly from being holy, holy, to ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find, and knock, and the door shall be opened. But just ask. Ask your Father, who is in heaven, if he won't show you the truth. Because you need to ask. You need to find facts. You need to walk with God today and find out the truth. Or you'll be completely misled and going the wrong way at the wrong time, in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing to the wrong people. Because you could be a blessing. You could be less root bound. And you could find that fruit was found in your life. God desired to make you the wine of his joy and his love. And that he would taste and see that you, personally, are a delight in his eyes. And not a deceived one. There is a false anointing out there. The false anointing is called false messianic. It's called anti-Christ, anti-messianic. The reality of the anti-messianic movement is that exclusion where they try to make the issue the Shabbos, the Sabbath, rather than Jesus the issue. The reality of Jesus is what you're dealing with and you don't know what you're talking about. You think you do, but you're not Jewish. You won't find Jewish rabbis or scholars or sages telling you that the sacred name is right anywhere, at any time, in any place. They will not tell you that it's correct because they deal with God, even though they don't know the Messiah. They will not aberrate the name of God to please anyone, at any time, anywhere, in any place. That should warn you that you're heading the wrong way and you're serving the God of this world. And that God is not Elohim, God Almighty. It is not who you think it is, and you're being deceived. Turn again your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his wonderful face. And the things of this world will go slowly dim as you, in the light of his glory and grace because his spirit will come to you. If you ask him to, God right now will send his spirit to you one-on-one. -on -one. God will choose this moment as you're watching this video to talk to you personally. He will tell you what the facts are if you ask him. All you got to do is ask. He desires for you to know him in a way you've never dreamed of, in a personal, intimate way that is irregardless of what you see in the world or all around you. It doesn't mean you change what you are today. It means you walk with God in a simple way and you begin to understand Maybe we're a little bit off on some of the things. It doesn't say to throw it all out, the baby with the bathwater. But God says, walk with me this day and talk with me, and I will be with you as your God, and you will be with me as my people, and I will call you my beloved. Isn't that what you really wanted in the first place? Just to walk with God and to talk with Him? To know Him?
to be with him. Oh my God. Why are you seeking after any other thing than to know him? Choose you this day. Don't be a Yah. Be with Abba. Be with your Father. Seek Jesus. Ask him to reveal to you who Yeshua Mashiach really is. Ask him to reveal to you the word of God that you have mistaken and gone the wrong way in this cult-like teaching of Yahushua.